So Dancing with the Stars and the Big Bang Theory. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce to you, class of 2013, the Waz and only, Mr. Steve Wozniak. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you've really got it made in life when you can be referred to with, by one name, like Sting or something like that. Um, my proudest moment of my life I get asked that all the time, and I think back to pictures I've seen and my diploma. It was my graduation day right here at this campus. So hear that. I've never said otherwise. Now, my, my wife and I were both a little bit mathematical. I'm not going to make a real profound speech because the ideas you get in your own head are where the real profoundness comes from. My wife and I are mathematical, so when we go to a hotel, we, look at, we judge the room by the room number. And so this time my wife turned to me and said, 409, that's two squared and three squared. We got a good room. Um, along those lines, I'll give you a little homeware, homework um, episode, which is, is there ever a full moon on the same day everywhere on Earth? Think about that on your own time. Um, another thing that I always get in my mind is the tassel was on the right when I graduated from Berkeley. And when we graduated, we moved the tassel to the left. I assumed this must be a standard rule of universities. When the internet came along, I looked it up, and I found that some did it the opposite way. Some had it on all four corners, depending on different things. And at Davis, half the people had it on the left to start with and half on the right. I finally figured out it was to keep the tassel out of the way of your face when your picture's being taken. So very seldom do we really pay attention to the fact that life does have rules if you look for them. Um, my wife and I recently went to a basketball game at Stanford, University of Colorado versus Stanford, and we were sitting in the Colorado seats up in the nosebleed section. I got recognized. They put me down in the front row of the Stanford Athletic Director's box. There we were, my wife and I, wearing Cal colors, rooting for Colorado. And from early on in life, we learned to, to, you know, be loyal to our school, my school right or wrong, my team right or wrong. It might just be what city I happen to live in. Does that make me a better person because I'm in a city that has a better team? Not really. We have to understand it's still lighthearted. It's a game. It's a fun ritual and that sort of thing. Because eventually in life, we start saying my country right or wrong, rather than asking questions and really challenging things that boil down to a lot of violence and death in the world. I was brought up, taught that there are people that are strong and use their muscles and their power, and they're forced to get somewhere. It's called brawn. Bullies push you around. And I wanted to be the other side, the brain side, that the brain was really the important for the future of a person and for the future of all of us. And, uh, and that's, so that's where I sat. I wanted to always be on the brain side. Berkeley, I wanted to attend Berkeley because it was a symbol of intellectual thought back in those counterculture times when people were talking about it being okay to live life different ways, that life could be different. The intellectuals were at the universities. They were challenging a lot of the accepted wisdom and ways that we lived our life. In the meantime, a lot of intellectuals at this campus had stood up for universe human values. They had stood up for, excuse me, there's a little bit of an echo, that's why I have trouble speaking. Um, they stood up for human rights. They stood up for wars that were wrong and protested. I remember groups coming down Shattuck breaking every window, up Durant breaking every window, and tear gas. We smelled tear gas. We collected rubber bullets when I was here. Um, it was a, a hard time to remember, but, this, but there were a lot of people standing up for something that was right and for fair treatment as well. Intellectuals stand up and say people should have certain rights to how they're going to be accused of something. What does it mean? innocent and still proven guilty. The burden of proof is on the accuser. We often forget that sort of stuff. Um, we challenged a war that was very wrong back then, the Vietnam War. And the phrase that was going around with us, make love, not war. And I took that into my heart and became a pacifist as a result. Berkeley, of course, was the best time of my life. It was the best friends. I hope you're here somewhere, John. It was the, the best experiences, the most exciting time. You're able to, you have the freedom in your life to explore, to be curious, to learn things, whatever you want to do to set your own directions and make choices. You also might get your first kiss here. 
it's also a time for the formation of your life values. Your personality kind of solidifies in those early 20s years, and that's what you're going to be like for life. You could probably look at yourself and your personality probably isn't going to change much from here to there. In my own case, I thought about it intellectually and said my brain can figure things out with logic, and I chose truth to be truthful to people. Even if you do things that are wrong or against the law, you will tell your parents and those close to you. Be kind to others was another one of my philosophies. And help those in need. You know, and, and it's hard because a lot of us forget about it. A lot of us get successful in life. We get money, we get wealth, we get fame like I did. And a lot of people become different people than they were. I liked the person I was when I graduated Berkeley. I liked the, the person I was when I attended here. And you know what? I decided I want to remain that person for life. And what would I have done if big successes like Apple hadn't happened? Uh, so that's why I went back. I taught elementary school for eight years, secretly, no press. That's why I, I actually came back to Cal to get a college degree. I would have gotten that degree if Apple hadn't happened. Um, you know, some misbehavior at this age in your life is, is great because fun has got to be a part of your productive life always. You've got to have relief, you've got to joke with your friends and play in little pranks that are harmless or is pretty nice. But you know what, a lot of that misbehavior, I spot it in the most creative people in the computer industry that I ever meet. They, they have those emotional memories of the times they played a joke on somebody or smiled or what made them laugh. Um, and that's creative thought. I came up with a formula, H equals um, S minus F. Happiness is what life's about. It doesn't matter how many yachts you have, what your title is, how much money you make, how many awards you got in life. The day you die, if you've been running everything tight, but another person is out on the streets, homeless, smiling, telling jokes, having a fun time, who would ra you rather be when you die? And I decided I'd rather be the fun person. So H equals S minus F. Happiness equals smiles minus frowns. Easy one. It led me to, and it led me to formulas in my life to avoid things that would eventually make me frown. Try to set yourself up so that things can happen, not the way you would prefer, but it doesn't necessarily have to make you frown. I modified that formula in later years to H equals um, F cubed. Happiness equals food, fun, and friends. Food is the necessities of life. Fun is entertainment. You gotta have that fun along with your productivity and friends, the people that you could roll ideas off to and get ideas and inspire you and support you through life. I said this once at my high school and the kids started laughing and I had to admit there might be a fourth F. I was lucky to have a car here at Berkeley and I would drive groups of us down, so many of us in my little pino, some would crouch down in the footwell of the passenger seat I would drive down most weekends to Tijuana, buy those firecrackers, bring those fire... The, the uh, carpets of Norton Hall could tell a story. I also bought my first guitar for $25 there. Music was an important part of my life, and it was just so relaxing to play the guitar every day for 20 years. Top dog. Here in Berkeley, I've never... I have never... That inspired me and my computer design so much because top dog, a hot dog, well then it was a different price, but now like 75 cents, but it's three dollars for a hot dog. You don't have to figure some pennies out for tax. You know, you buy uh, 50 cents for a bun, it's a dollar fifty for a drink. Nice, simple amounting, you don't have to do all this worrying about the fringe little extra details that every accountant will tell you are the important critical parts. It is so simple, it is so nice for the buyer. And I like to put that thought about simplicity into all of my designs. Just make them work so simple. The person doesn't have to do as much work, doesn't have to think as much. Get the details out of the way. The purpose of engineering, of course, is to build devices, appliances that make our home life a lot simpler and give us more fun and more type. They save us work and they save us thinking. And that was a goal. And if we did this long enough, someday we'd only have to work four days a week. We were totally successful, but now it takes two people working hard, stressful, full-time jobs just to own a home in Silicon Valley. So we didn't really, the wealth didn't come out that way to those that were doing the work. The human versus the technology, which is more important? Almost every one of you out there would say the human, 
but it's very interesting when you get to companies and you're working on products, you have to think very hard. You have to put so much work into products to make them work in a natural way to humans that the humans enjoy and love it and feel like this is something I want to use and be a part of. That was really what we were good at at Apple. Um, you know, and you look at the big companies of technology, Apple, Google, and all that, all started by young people like yourself. Well, these companies, you know, um, they, they, every time they come up with a new product, you say, this is a better world. We have something better. When a politician makes a decision, a Congress makes a decision, anywhere in the world, half the people say it's good, half the people say it's bad. We never get a consensus that there's always one super good. Very rare. In, at the political level. So I think the most important people in the world are the ones that run technology companies. <laughs> computers, computers are getting more like humans. One time I could write with my own hand, muscles in my hand, handwriting, and it understood me. Not only did it understand me, but when I clicked a button, the note that I'd written to myself, a human, was understood to be a calendar on a certain date and time with a note and pulling a, one of my daughters out of, out, of the, um, out of my contact book. I said, forever that changed my life. I want technology to work my human way. I don't want to think about ways to do things. I just want to get it done. Computers are good at doing things, but not at figuring out the ways to do them. It takes a lot of effort on the part of manufacturers. Now, of course, we're speaking to our phones. How far is it from Berkeley to Boston? How far is it from Berkeley to Dallas? And I'm kind of shocked when it says we're closer to Dallas. Or will computers ever be conscious? They'll be really true friends. They'll know your heart and soul better than you do. Your little phone. Will that happen? I used to say no. Computers, we don't know how the brain's wired. We'll never figure out how to make a computer come up with the method to solve a problem. They can only follow our methods. I'm starting to, dis to not believe that. I'm starting to think we're going to find computer consciousness because we're getting closer and closer. You used to ask a smart person, a university professor, a difficult question. And now you ask someone whose name starts G-O, and it's not God. So, so we didn't design the internet or any of these computers to replace the brain, but it sort of happened. We discovered that huge amounts of information of the world and processing ability and sorting it and searching, all of a sudden that replaces a lot of stuff we used to use brains for. A lot of changes coming in the future. You have to find your own keys to your happiness in life keys that work for myself or a friend aren't going to necessarily be the right keys for you. It's in you. Um, one of the things is you don't have to win arguments. You just have to win it inside yourself. Know that your way of thinking is right and good by your standards. And if somebody else thinks a different way, that's fine. You can still be good and friends. Even if somebody hurts you, you can treat them kindly. If they say bad things to you, you can say nice things back. Um, I think of songs and music that influence my life a lot. And uh, Bob Dylan saying, you were right from your side, I was right from mine. We're just one too many mornings and a thousand miles behind. You know, in other words, we're a little different, and that's all we're going to look at it peacefully. Dave Mason saying, there ain't no good guy, there ain't no bad guy. There's only you and me, and we just disagree. It's a good way to even have partings. Um, there's a type of bigotry in this world that's prominent. You have to be like me, or you're not good. Get that out of your soul. It's like if you use a certain platform of computer and somebody else uses another, don't put them down and call them bad. Appreciate them that they have a brain and they made a choice and if their choice works for them, it's still good. You don't really have to say the whole world has to be like me. You know, we, uh, sometimes we have a metaphor for life called the river. But the river, you're just sort of flowing in it. You're not a participant. You're not pr a proponent. I think of it more like driving your car. And what are some of the rules? When I got my driver's license and I was on the freeway for the first time, cars would want to merge in, I would back off and let them merge in. And I said to myself, we're all going somewhere. We're all going to get there. We're all going to help each other. It's OK to use your brakes as a human brain and your own brain, too. Um, once in a while driving, you'll find yourself wanting to wander, go explore, dream a little, and visit some faraway places, cities, off your normal course, the normal course that everyone else is taking. Take the side roads in life, you know, and then you might find yourself out in the middle of a farm field, and you either got there because you were dreaming or because you trusted your GPS system. Your intellectual and physical energy is at a peak at this age. 
Look at the young age of the people that started Google, Facebook, Apple, Yahoo back when, and a lot of these other companies. They're your age, and they come up with ideas that they believe in, they work for it like Brianna did. And you gotta, you gotta trust in yourself and know what your internal passion is, and that's what'll drive you to success. When you have success, are you gonna become a different person though? And all of a sudden, money and power and wealth and increasing it is important to you? Or are your ideals today gonna to be with you forever? You can't tell yourself, I want to be this person that I like forever in life. Now's your time to change the world and to think different. Go Bears, go Oski, go with peace. Thank you very much. Please welcome the African Music Ensemble, followed by the University of California Gospel Chorus.